Ah, you have yourself a nice night. Tomorrow, I'll look for you uh, live at the Carbondale Pioneers Day Parade. We will be broadcasting it live and exclusive on Channel 16 from 1.30 to 3.30. The parade starts at 1, so we look for you uh, either at the parade or via the TV. We hope to have you join us one way or the other. If you're at the parade, certainly come on up and get on camera with me. We'll have a great time. Uh, you stay tuned for Newswatch 16. That is next. Have a super weekend. And Monday, I hope you meet me right back here at the $16,000 movie. Tonight in the news, he's heading out west after being your troubleshooter for three years. Plus a juicy story about a lemon of a business. I'm Karen Harch. Newswatch 16 is next. Save all your aluminum cans and bring them to the telethon on Labor Day. Wait a minute. Wait. This is the news station, WNEP 16. Good evening. I'm Karen Harch. Nolan Johannes has the night off. Tonight we say goodbye to your friend and ours. He has helped to solve many of your problems over the three years he's been with our Newswatch 16 team. We will all miss Mike Igo, but we wish Mike and his wife Debbie all the luck in his new job in Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Tonight we take a look back at what Mike has done for you as Action 16's consumer reporter. We've been bounced all over the place. Eh? Furious. <laughs> it's like one against a million. Thought I was going to be raped off. It was usually frustration that brought people to Action 16. And you didn't have to be a damsel in distress to get our help either, despite some popular myths. Our winning cases range from babies to bouncing checks, coin collections to credit, airline rights to aquariums, and from toys to time sharing, to name a few. Come to think of it, we've gotten into just about everything. There's also been help for our four-legged friends, some of whom weren't too cooperative. To answer a common question, I don't have a favorite story, but a few do come to mind. Like Boxcar Willie, the man billed as America's most beloved hobo. We needed more people like you when Richard Nixon was in office. <laughs> I found it very satisfying to get 235 Cooper Street come tumbling down for the folks in Courtdale. And I'm especially thankful that I was able to get a special monitor for little Desiree DeLong who suffered from sudden infant death syndrome. And now, my friends, it's time to say goodbye. If you'll permit me to sound like a sentimental old cornball, I'd really like to say that it's been a real pleasure to serve you with your problems. And I hope that I've been able to bring some measure of happiness into your lives. And now, as I leave Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, please permit me to leave you with one final thought. Never give up the fight for what's rightfully yours. And if you find yourself in that situation, don't quit. And always try to remember the encouragement that was given to you by your friend, Mike Igo, Action 16. Although we will all sadly miss Mike, Newswatch 16 and Action 16 are committed to helping you with any problems you may have. So you can still write to Action 16 when you're in need. Telethon is coming! The telethon is coming! Engineers are just about finished with a feasibility study on a bridge. They're trying to figure out just what should be done with the Butler Street Bridge in the east end section of Wilkes-Barre. Engineers are getting cost estimates for either rehabilitation or removal of the Butler Street Bridge. Once they are finished, they'll meet with Wilkes-Barre city officials to decide just what should be done. The state has already decided what to do about the price utilities around here charge for natural gas. And depending on where you live, the changes will mean higher or lower heating bills. People who get their gas from Pennsylvania Gas and Water, Pike County Power and Light, or Pennsylvania and Southern Gas of Bradford County will pay up to an average $92 more a year. Customers of the Penn Fuel Gas Company in Ashland, Mount Carmel, Shimokin, and Pottsville will see their heating bills drop by as much as $74 a year. The state made the changes based on the price the utilities pay for the natural gas. Prisoners in Lycoming County will be seeing new bars in the future. We'll explain when Newswatch 16 continues. Newswatch 16 is everywhere. The ground has been broken in Williamsport for the new Lycoming County prison. The $6 million jail is being built because inmates had complained about poor conditions at the current jail. In fact, they say you have to see it to believe it. Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens will show you. 
Jake Coker is a guard at Lycoming County's prison. Two years ago, he fell through the deteriorated iron grating on the second floor cell block and was off work for three months. He still gets pain in his hips from that fall and says the experience would be enough to show anyone the county does need a new jail. I'm looking for it to be easier to keep clean and better control over the inmates and so on like it there. It would be a safer working conditions. The county's current prison is 120 years old. Cells are small, and each cell houses two inmates. That, plus the fact that it's 90 degrees inside, creates a dangerous situation for guards. Uh, overcrowding causes tension among inmates. Tension among inmates uh, causes uh, tension on staff. Does it ever become dangerous? Occasionally it's become dangerous. Uh, a federal judge has ordered the county to change the conditions here, although that means building a new $6 million lockup The people who work here say it's long overdue. Well, this is 120 years old now, and it's just deteriorated to the point it, it can't, nothing can be done with it. And, uh, we're double uh, crowded in the, uh, in the rooms here, which we have no hot water for the inmates. Lycoming County hopes to start building its new prison within a few weeks and have it finished by 1985. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Williamsport. It's an investigation into a construction project that has some officials in Luzerne County hot under the collar tonight. The Hanover Area School Board is upset with the way an investigation is being handled into the construction of the district's junior-senior high school. The State Education Department is checking into the quality of the construction and possible waste of state money when the school was built back in the 70s. The present school board has sent a letter to the governor saying the Education Department has been dragging its feet and now the Hanover Board wants the whole matter turned over to a grand jury. The film that championship season premieres tonight in Scranton, and Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellich reports that not too many people will be there to see the movie that was filmed partly in Scranton. That championship season, the movie will finally have its Scranton premiere here at the West Side Theater, but it won't have all the pomp and fanfare that the New York premiere had because neither the stars nor Jason Miller will be here. This premiere at $10 a person will benefit the city's efforts to bring Steamtown USA here. But only a little more than 100 people bought tickets for tonight's premiere. Local businessman John Lawless was one of them. And, uh, I think it's a good idea that we get involved with uh, something like Steamtown coming into this area. We need more of that type of action. And I just felt it was my part to come up and see the show tonight. Theater owner Carmen Rizzo says he thinks so few bought tickets because they're not getting enough for their money. Well, if we did have more time, we would have liked uh, uh, a few of the stars to come in for the show for the premiere night. Uh, also, uh, possibly a little cocktail party upstairs in the lounge. Uh, and I think that would have uh, uh, generated a little more interest uh, among the people. But Rizzo says Saturday, when the seats go from $10 to $4 to see that championship season, he expects the place to be packed. Only a small fraction of the 1,600 seats here at the West Side Theater will be occupied tonight, but many feel that's no indication that people of Scranton have lost interest in the movie. They feel more that people are not willing to pay for Steamtown. At any rate, we'll be here tonight at 11 o'clock to get the reactions of the people who do come to see the movie. Kathy Bellich, Newswatch 16, Scranton. And Newswatch 16 continues with a look at the weekend weather. We'll be right back. Food, fun, games, and entertainment galore at St. Martha's Festival on the parish grounds in Fairmount Springs. It all takes place Saturday and Sunday, September 3rd and 4th. There is music for dancing starting Saturday evening and continuing through Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. And the food is delicious. In addition to the usual picnic fare, there's chicken and ham dinner Sunday afternoon from noon till 6 p.m. It's all at St. Martha's Festival in Fairmount Springs, Saturday and Sunday, September 3rd and 4th. Thousands of heart patients here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania now have a better chance at life. As Newswatch 16's Dan Fiorucci reports, it's all because of special medical equipment that keeps the heart in beat. This is how a heart beats normally. And this is how it beats when something is terribly wrong. The condition is called arrhythmia, and it can be very dangerous. I've got a pain in my chest and my chest started shaking. When Don Newman first contracted his arrhythmia, he was told he'd have to travel hundreds of miles to get it treated. But Newman hasn't traveled far to get help for his problem. He's come here to the Geisinger Medical Center in Danville. While you're down here, Mr. Newman, we'll just put you up so that we know you're okay. 
This summer, Geisinger acquired the sophisticated equipment needed to treat arrhythmia, electrical devices that can be inserted into the heart to reproduce sporadic beating. Once the arrhythmia has been reproduced, doctors can test to see what drugs will return the beat to normal. 350,000 uh, people die every year from this particular type of problem, and I would estimate that we could uh, save probably five to 10,000 people per year if enough patients uh, had this type of procedure done. Without such treatment, the odds are seven in 10 that Don Newman would not survive. With the treatment, his chances for survival are 90%. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16 at the Geisinger Medical Center. Well, I know when I was going home from work last night, it was downright chilly out there, mm -hmm. but Tom Clark, it felt good. It did, uh, Karen. The past few nights have been nice and cool, but uh, another typical day today for the summer of 1983. Lots of sunshine and warm temperatures. As a matter of fact, so far this summer, we have received 70%, or close to that, of the total possible amount of sunshine. So it has been very, very nice since uh, June 22nd over the uh, northeastern part of Pennsylvania. A lot of things going on outdoors this weekend across the Channel 16 viewing area. And in just a moment, we'll find out on which day this weekend the weather will be best. But outside now in this backyard, we have uh, partly cloudy skies overhead. It's a warm temperature of 85 degrees, humidity 46%. The wind now west, gusty at times, but averaging about 12 miles per hour. And the barometer now is falling at 30.09 inches. High today here, 88 this afternoon. That's uh, a good nine degrees above normal. And the low this morning, Karen, there you go, 62. Records 98 and 45. In the background, the Little League baseball field out in South Williamsport getting ready for the big championship game tomorrow. Looks a little hazy out that way this afternoon. And that's live video from South Williamsport. On Newswatch 16 Sky Warn Radar. Coming up, we can see, now take a look, we see some mountain echoes in the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area, but uh, this is dry in here. But up here, I want to show you some thunderstorms. There's a thunderstorm there and there. Up across the northern counties, Bradford County, Tioga County, Susquehanna County, even northern Wayne County. Those areas have some thunderstorm activity now, and these storms moving due east. And so I suspect that most of us will not see any rain tonight just up there in the northern tier counties where radar is currently showing some thunderstorms. Now, Newswatch 16's color satellite photograph shows, take a look down in the Gulf of Mexico, that is still a tropical low by the name of Barry, and uh, when across Florida it had winds of 55 miles per hour. Now the wind's still below 40 miles per hour, but the storm may yet strengthen into a tropical storm when winds would become over 40 miles per hour, and some forecasters are hinting that it may even become a hurricane before landing ashore somewhere south of Corpus Christi, Texas, down around that way, Sunday night or Monday of next week. So it shouldn't affect our weather. Up here, some thunderstorms west of Pennsylvania, a line of clouds up that way, a leading edge of cooler, drier air heading towards Pennsylvania. It'll begin moving in late tomorrow, and it'll bring with it some thunder showers, but behind it, a much nicer day on Sunday for your outdoor plans. So here's our forecast for tonight, a warm and hazy night. Again, some thunderstorms over the northern tier counties. Most of us won't see rain tonight. 68, Dixon City, and about 68 out in Jersey Shore. 70 in Danville, and about 67 down in Lehighton tomorrow. Now, here's Saturday's forecast. Hazy sun up there, very humid, okay? Now, in Back Mountain, near the Dallas area, 84 for the high tomorrow. They're getting set for the big triathlon event. And runners and cyclists, take heed. Very humid. Maintain your water supply. Drink lots of water. 83, Far City, about 82 in Swiftwater. Again, watch out for a thunderstorm in the afternoon. And that could, at, at worst, delay the championship game out at South Williamsport with a high tomorrow will be 87 degrees. A weekend at the shore will look like this weather-wise, partly sunny over the weekend. A thunderstorm likely late tomorrow and tomorrow night, 80 to 85 along the surf there and in the surf, about 75 degrees. That's nice and comfortable. Now, that thunderstorm tomorrow, 85, sunny, less humid, and much more comfortable day on Sunday, 80 degrees. And Monday, partly sunny, 78. Tuesday, back to school day for a lot of people. It should be dry with comfortable temperatures. A warm day coming tomorrow. You should enjoy it. Karen, there you go. Okay, we will enjoy. Thanks okay. a lot, Tom.
Chances are the next time you take a bus, it'll be a brand new one. Bus companies all over northeastern and central Pennsylvania will be getting new buses to add to their fleets. The federal government says 80 percent pays 80 percent of the cost. The state and local governments pick up the rest of the tab. 200 buses will be going to cities in the state, including Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Hazleton, Allentown, Williamsport, and Stroudsburg. And Newswatch 16 continues with the president getting into the ball game. We'll be right back. Everything from whitewater to black powder to beavers, biking, and bows, from copperheads to whitetails to casting, calling, and crows. You'll see stalking fish, fixing poles, rainbow trout, and snowy owls, setting traps, drilling holes, earthworms, and waterfowl. Whether you're a fan of the eagles, browns, bears, or giants, or of Joe and Stan and the Mountain Man, or some Tom Duck, or Harry, watch hiking, frying, riding, tying, skiing, and flying on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, Saturday at 7. A ceremony was held in South Williamsport today honoring the two teams that will play for the title tomorrow. Two Little League balls autographed by President Reagan were hand-delivered to the two teams, one from Latin America, the other from Marietta, Georgia. They were delivered by Congressman George Geekus. And once again, Joe Zone is live in South Williamsport at the Little League World Series. I'm over here. Oh, Joe, where are you? Thank you. <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Well, people think, Karen, that it's kind of an off day here Fridays in Williamsport, but don't say that to the six teams that played consolation games today. They played three games, Saudi Arabia and uh, Japan, and who else? Chicago. All won baseball games today in the consolation. But the focus here centers on tomorrow's championship game between the United States and the Dominican Republic. The Marietta kids were out early this morning going through final preparations. It was a light and easy-going workout. There seemed to be no signs of the nervousness one might expect as these kids get ready to play the biggest games of their lives. Marietta coach Rich Hilton says there's a reason for that. He says all of that took place on the road to Williamsport. Once you're here, there's no longer a need to be on edge. There's not a loser here. All these eight teams are, are winners. And I hadn't seen a team walk out of there with a head down when they lost. But we still want to win it. Marietta got to the final by beating Chicago in the first game of the series. It was a sloppily played game with all seven of Marietta's runs coming on Chicago mistakes. But yesterday's win over Stanford in the semifinal was a complete contrast. Trailing by five runs early in the game, Marietta rallied and won in the bottom of the sixth with a two out bases loaded single. Mark Pichota, who won Tuesday's game on a neat two hitter, will pitch tomorrow against the Dominicans. The Dominican boys might be the most skilled bunch in the tournament. They run well, play good defense, and seem to make all of the right mental plays. They had little trouble beating Canada 8-2, and then followed yesterday with a no-hitter against Japan. The kid who threw the no-hitter, Jose Almonte, will not be eligible to pitch in tomorrow's title game. To be honest, of course, I haven't seen enough of either team to make any predictions. So suffice it to say that they are the two best Little League teams in the world. I'm going to root for our kids. And by the way, you can see it tomorrow at 5 o'clock right here on Channel 16. Okay, let's continue the countdown. The Super 16 High School Football Preview Team Number 8. We go to the strong Wyoming Valley Conference for the Mohawk Myers. Talk about favorites in most conferences this year centers around one, maybe two teams, except in the Wyoming Valley's B Division. In that league, anybody can walk away with the title. The Myers Mohawks were at so-so 6-5 last year, but this year the key to winning the title depends on desire. We should be a half-decent team. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying we're going to be better than last year, but if everybody you know, wants to do better, then we will do better than last year. Like any team, like most teams, there are weaknesses. But Coach Mickey Gorm feels that there are more strengths, and that's why he likes the Mohawks' chances this year. We feel that uh, we have a very explosive tailback, and we think our quarterback has excellent potential, both as a runner and as a passer. So we hope to exploit those two ends. Uh, I think that we have an experienced defensive group, so we're hoping that our defense uh, plays real superb as well. The players also feel they have the talent to take Myers all the way to the title, and that's something that will build up their confidence on the football field. We have uh, a lot of leaders on the team, you know, with the quarterback, the backfield, a couple of veteran linemen. Any of the Wyoming Valley 6B teams can walk away with the title this year, but there is a look and feeling surrounding Myers that make the Mohawks stand slightly above the rest 
in reaching for the Eastern Conference B Championship. The Myers Mohawks, team number eight. And tonight at seven, we'll look at team number seven. Next week, we'll count down to team number one. Okay, a little something different going on this weekend at Pocono International Speedway. What do you feel about uh, truck racing? They're calling it the world's biggest, the world's richest, the world's most exciting truck race. Big powerful rigs will be uh, up there racing for the big bucks. It all starts at 11 o'clock on Sunday at Pocono International Speedway. Okay, we time for the fish forecast. Now, let's see the best times to go fishing over the weekend. For, for some reason, you're not going to be here tomorrow. I guess you could probably go out fishing, and there they are. That's all of it. Give tonight your best shot. I'll see you at 11 o'clock with all the updates. Karen? Joe, I can't wait for you to get back here so I can keep tabs on you. I know where you are then. <laughs> you sound like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Joe. Okay. A nickel will get you what Mike Stevens found on the Pennsylvania Road as Newswatch 16 continues. Next big event on NEP, live and exclusive, the Chirondale Pioneer Days Parade. WNEP will bring you two full hours of live parade coverage beginning at 1.30 Saturday. Come on out and join Carbondale in their fifth annual gateless celebration. See the Philadelphia Mummers in full mummer regalia. Over 200 entries will parade down the streets of Carbondale. First time live on television, the big Carbondale Pioneer Days Parade right here exclusively on WNEP TV 16. And finally tonight, a look at a little lad at the Little League World Series who's squeezing some profits out of the thirsty fans. Newswatch 16's man on the Pennsylvania Road, Mike Stevens, tells us about him. Little League baseball is about as American as apple pie, mom, and our free enterprise system. So it's fitting to find Pat Holtzman in business right on the edge of the park grounds. Pat sells lemonade at a nickel a cup along the road that a lot of people walk to and from games. That's what you call a captive audience. How much have you made? Uh, about $16.50. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with the money? Put it in the bank, some of it, most of it, and not all of it. Pat's font of lemonade flows from the Holtzman kitchen. His mother, Judy, can be found there most afternoons, cutting and squeezing, cutting and squeezing. I have no formula. I just squeeze until I realize it <laughs> taste it. <laughs> it's just like my grandmother used to do. Grandma's recipe seems to be pretty good, because folks line up at Pat's stand to get their five-ounce cup of refreshment. The idea is to get him to talk to people, to teach him the value of money, to instill in him the merits of the American free enterprise system, values that will linger long after the series is over. You gonna, you gonna sell some next year, Pat, do you think? I don't know if I remember to. I'm Mike Stevens, Newswatch 16 on the Pennsylvania Road in South Williamsport. You can't beat that. Fresh lemonade for a nickel a cup. And that's Newswatch 16 for this Friday. Be sure to join us tonight at 11 on the update when we'll have more on that championship season in Scranton. For the team, thanks for being with us and enjoy your evening.